All right, this is aired down and we're back. I'm Daniel and this beautiful hunk of steel that's been freshly and very arduously cleaned is a 99-04 Super Duty Dana 60. And this beautiful boy is the ballistic fabrication shape kit for an 05 and up Super Duty Dana 60. So what we're gonna do is do the shave and we're going to see if it fits, if it works, if it's the same basic thing. And uh, then we'll report back to Ballistic, give them some information on what the cut should be, if it's different. One kink here, since we're in a global pandemic and we're all supposed to self-isolate or whatever, I'm gonna have to shave this with a sawzall, just like the Backwoods boys do. Step number one, put the cover on and just jab some bolts into it. I just usually put all the bolts in, that way I'm sure things are lining up the way they should. Okay, with all these cranked down, now I'm going to scribe a line across this surface here. To scribe this line, because I want it to be as close to this cover as possible, I use a razor blade and I keep a stash of like discarded ones that aren't that sharp. Just don't get cut, huh? Okay, should be as simple as that, and then we'll take the cover back off. You can see I've got a nice line right across where that goes, and I can see it way better in person. Here, let's do that. Let's rub some finger grease into it. There, now you can see it. Alright, so now that I've got that, we want to take this and stick it up against here, up against that line, and then scribe another line on the opposite side, here and here. And that'll tell us how far to cut, and we're gonna cut shy of that line and then grind up to it so we don't do anything stupid. Okay, it stayed. And it stayed. If we bolt this to the front, it's going to angle out away this way. So we want to make sure when we're doing our cut to not cut straight down, like perpendicular to this surface. We want to cut at an angle away from it. Okay, now you can probably see that angle I'm talking about. And also it's a good thing that we put this on here, because it shows I got this big gap here where this AR500 plate the skid plate that they mention in the ad goes on. So I could even cut another whatever the thickness of this is out of it. Looks like 3 16 to me. Could be quarter. All right, after a little bit of deliberation, I've decided to not go that extra quarter inch for that AR500 plate. I'm just going to start on this line and then I'll grind it down to the final finish. It'll take longer, but I think it'll be Safer, and since these aren't exactly free, safer is good. There's part one. Sure doesn't look great so far, does it? I'm just going to cut off these tabs that I don't need. And I want to be careful to avoid this bolt hole. I keep checking the distance away that this bolt hole is from this one and then on the opposite side. And it seems like progress is just painstaking. you can see I'm starting to see a large portion of the hole inside the cover hole. So 
we're creeping up on it. I can either thread this bolt in, or I can rotate it a little bit and thread this bolt in by hand. Okay, they thread in by hand. Okay, there you have it folks. Ballistic shave kit, bolted on. Here's how it fits on the bottom. And I don't think you can see it, but here's the kind of spacing it has. I'm ready to weld the bottom plate on this sucker and that's what we're doing today. They didn't offer this kit for the 99-04 when I bought it. It's for an 05 and up. And this is the bottom plate it comes with. I mean, the bottom plate fits okay, but you can see like it gets tight here and it overlaps in a couple spaces here. But now, I worked with the guy from Ballistic on actually making a bottom cover. And uh, I did all the CAD work behind it. That's what I do for a living is engineering. So you can see right away that this one is a much better fit all around. And the deal was he was gonna send me a bottom plate that's cut to this size, and then I would just weld it on and we'd be well on our way. I sent him the information for this probably two months ago and he still doesn't have a bottom plate for me, so um, I'm just going to modify this one to fit. My job now is to mark up this existing body, bottom plate wherever it overhangs the one I've got in my hand here and trim it down to fit. So I'm gonna get my magic marker out and I'm going to make it happen. Yep, that's a good start. Now I'm motivated. All right, I got this all marked up. You can see the orange line basically. At least there's no spot where I would have to add material to, to make up the difference. Right here it gets close, but it'll be fine. You see me grind and grind and grind and grind, so I'm just gonna spare you and just do the grinding work and come back. I've got the bottom plate trimmed up over there, but it's super hot, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to quickly trace out where it goes. So it looks like what I can do is I can trim a bunch of metal back all throughout here and then right here as well. When I welded the shave kit on the rear axle, I did the outside and then the inside and the inside made it bow pretty severe, actually, just welding it on the inside. So I figure on this one, if I could trim back enough metal to where there isn't a lot of extra space here, when I weld the inside, it will have a lot less tendency to bow. And I'd still like to weld the inside to sort of guarantee that strength and guarantee that liquid tightness. So. All right, here's my modified bottom plate. Pretty good one for one for a guy with a grinder, so. But I want to weld right across this little face. I think it's a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is just bevel as much as I have to on this and leave the rest sharp. Yeah, just something really basic like that. Just a little surface to weld into. Another mistake I made last time I just bolted the cover on, bolted this to the cover, tacked it in a few spots, and it took this and went eek. And so I have a gap in between here and my cover in one spot. This time, I'm gonna put the cover on, and while this is still hard bolted to the cover, I'm going to run almost all of the welding, and then unbolt it, and run this last little bit here, and in the face, and on the inside. Okay, let's get to work. All right, well, I've got everything I need to tack. I've got that Nikor wire I keep talking about. I'll probably list more in the description, but it's perfect for welding iron to steel. And I've got uh, the stuff ready I don't quite need yet. The needle scaler for after I do a bead. The wire wheel for after I needle scale to help kind of uh, 
I guess anneal the bead or whatever. So now what I'm gonna do is just knock out my tack welds. All right, good enough, let's preheat. So this is feeling a little bit light and I don't think it's gonna get me through this preheat job. So I'm gonna go to the store and buy another one. I'll be right back. This is how much iron dust I shaved off of that bottom plate. Quite a bit actually, so that should give you an idea of just how much work I did on that thing. Okay, got some lunch, got some Wendy's, got a new bottle of map gas, couple other funny things from the hardware store, and now we're ready to party. I'll catch back up with you when it's time to weld because the preheat is super boring. Well, this is just about preheated. 220, I had to hit 250, so I mean, we're close. But uh, if it seems a little dark in here, it's because the power just went out. So, I don't know, I guess I'll do something else. I don't know what to do. The electricity is back on. Time to, yeah, it's, it's stone cold again. It was off for like 45 minutes to an hour. So, let's preheat again and get down to it. We're gonna do a small bead first to get the seal, and then we're gonna come over and do a big fat bead. The big fat bead is for strength. that cool for like three or four hours. Boy, that's some fast paced work. It's on your toes constantly. Preheating, welding, needle scaling, wire wheel, wash, rinse, repeat, and all the same time trying to keep even heating. Kind of nutty. It can get out of hand kind of fast. It'd be nice to have a buddy to help you do this. Well, this has been wrapped up for about two and a half hours and it's hot to the touch. It's 98.6, I guess it's uh, as hot as a body. There's one last step to the shave kit, and it's welding this bottom plate on. Now, you must be wondering, well, what? why would you weld this big, thick plate on, and then this little plate right after it? But this thick plate is just steel, and this bottom plate is AR500, which is supposedly super slippery. So, because we trimmed this bottom plate, now this piece is out of size. This is kind of the gap, because I didn't shave this part at all of this plate. This is the gap that is designed into it from ballistic. So what I'm going to do is just follow that gap and kind of mark it out all the way around and then just cut the gap out. And uh, now I'll just take it over there and I'll grind it, grind all this material out. So what's about to happen here is I'm about to do my very first TIG welding project on a rock crawler. Uh, but you can't get better if you don't practice and you don't try. So I'm going to experiment with doing TIG on this. And of course, I've never welded AR500 in my life, so why not TIG weld it? Let's see if I can get it to tack in the corner right here. I'm kind of nervous. I've never really done a TIG project at all. Okay, there's a tack weld. Well, I 
think I'm willing to take it for my first real go. I might try to wander back over this with a nice uh, with a nice weave and just add a little bit extra right on top of this. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. All right, I'm gonna do this small crack here. I am pretty proud of myself for that. I dipped the tip once or twice near the end, but I was able to hold on to the weld. I'm just gonna end up grinding it flat anyway, but I gotta get some pictures of that before I do. I think I'm going to try to weave over this bead up to here. Well, I just ran back over this section with a little weave, and then I just filled in a tiny little spot where I had a little porous bubble. But it still gouged the base material. So I don't know enough about TIG welding to know why it's gouging out this mild steel and flowing it into the puddle. Maybe I did have too much uh, amperage or something. I don't know, maybe you guys know and you can tell me. There's a lot of fun using this to do it. I'm quite pleased with the results even. I'm gonna smooth a bunch of these edges out and then I'll get you and show you and then I'm gonna go to bed. Well, I'm not sure how much you can see, but this is the welding that got done today. The bright, the backlight is kind of bright. The TIG welding got pretty good right in here. And then it kind of went south again. But as you can see what I mean where that other wire starts to want to pile up on itself and sag over. And it's, I'm having a really hard time getting great bead appeal out of it. I get it once in a while, like here's fine. Anyway, that is the shaved bottom plate installed. And I think that there's one last thing to do. Also, before I forget, I mowed down this little bead flat with the surface. I'm going to have to take the grinder and just kind of grind out a little bit of weld from this hole and a little bit of weld from this hole, but uh, no big deal. So I'll have to get those sorted out later. I don't care what planet you're from, that's a good looking cover. And having that uh, shave kit knock off, what does he say, an inch and a quarter? That's about that much? That's pretty great. I have to trim, uh, you can see right here that hangover, I have to trim that off. But I mean just a quick little burr trim with the grinder, done. We've got a shaved and AR500 skid plated front end. And my, oh my, does it look gorgeous. Well, that was a lot of fun. I actually did have quite a bit of fun doing this. Um, it's nice to have a shaved front end and a shaved rear end now. If you guys like this kind of uh, fab thing going on, this down and dirty fab, give me a like, give me a follow. It'd be super awesome if you subscribe to my channel. I hope that you keep following along and you see the fruition of this adventure. Well, until next time, peace out and go rock crawling. Have a good night. Bye.